how far did we get to? Um, is this it right here, the first term? Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, this is an excellent question. Um, lots of ways to do it. Um, it says, the first term of a sequ sequence is negative 3, and every term after the first term is 5 more than the term immediately preceding it. What is the value of the 101st term? All right, let's hear it. Who, who thinks they got a correct answer here? What did you get? Uh, I got it. It's... Oh, I like it. It is... D. D. Good. What else? It's B. You think it's B. Good for you. It's good. Let's get all the answers in here. B. <coughs> all right. B. 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 A lot of Bs. Oh, more, another A. Good. D. 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 All right. So let me try to show you now mathematically how you'd want to think about this. All right. So um, let me let's write this down, please. All right. And again, this is how people can add things up and figure things out quickly. All right. Because it, it, it's an easy concept if you understand what I'm saying. So it says the first term is negative three. So let's put down negative three. All right. And then um, so we have negative three. Then the next term would be what? Five. Two. And then the next term would be what? Seven. And the next term would be, uh, yes, 12. And then what we're doing is we're just adding five each time, correct? All right. Now, please look up on the board. Those are actually called multiples of five. They're just been shifted. Would you agree with that? So look right here. If I did 5, 10, 15, 20, does everybody agree? That's the same. Those are the multiples of 5. All right. But those are the multiples of 5 that haven't uh, been shifted. Is everybody agreeing with me? All right. Now, we are interested in the 101st term. All right. So now I want you to think real carefully. Listen to how simple this is. All right. Would everybody agree this right here is the first term? Right. So if you want to find the hundred and first term, if I said, what's the hundred and first term in this sequence right here, that wouldn't be that hard to figure out. It would just be what? 505. Did everybody get that? Because you're adding five, what? 101 times, right? So that's how, if I wanted the 101st term here, it would be 505. Everybody agree? So now I'm trying to get you to recognize how I would get the correct answer now. All right? So what I want to show you is the first term is negative 3. You're going to add to that, how many more terms are there? A hundred. So you're going to add five a hundred times. And if I add five a hundred times, that will give me what? Five hundred and five. Does everybody agree with that? So this... I'm sorry, I said 505, and I meant to say 500, right? So let me say one more time. This is the first term. Does everybody agree? This is uh, the sum of 5 added 100 times. That's the sum of 5 added 100 times. Does everybody agree with what I'm saying now? So if... The sum of the first 100 is 500, and the first term is what? Negative 3. Then you, are, you end up at what? You end up at 497. All right? Yes. That's, listen to me. That's a very, I'm very happy with you. Listen to what he said. Very important. Are we adding five? Listen to what I'm saying. It'll help you out tremendously. 
are you adding 5 101 times? Or are you adding it what? You're adding it 100 times. Yes, because negative 3 counts as one of the terms. You hear me? You see how tricky that is? Right? That's very tricky. So the average, you know, it's there's so much in this question, right? That if you wanted to, you could kind of recognize the pattern, right? Um, so uh, again, he said something very smart. 101 terms seems like you're adding five, what, 101 times, but you're not. That's what I tried to show you with this example right here. Is everybody agreeing with that? All right. So again, very, very important, very important problem. So the correct answer was D. All right. For those of you guys who tried it, looked it, thought about it, that's all I'm asking for. Those are definitely types of questions you'll be seeing. All right. Let's look at number seven. It says, in a certain club, the median age of the members is 11. Which of the following statements must be true? Now, how many people are in the club? I don't know. I think it's going to be a hard one. Right? The oldest member in the club is at least one year older than the youngest. Does that have to be true? No, because you could have a club with just what? 11-year-olds. In order to be in the club, you have to be 11. So does that, so because there aren't any restrictions, those are the types of things you have to think about. Does everybody agree one does not have to be true? Right? So if one is not true, I'm crossing out anything with a one. If there are, if there is a 10-year-old in the club, there's also a 12-year-old. I don't think so. That doesn't have to be true. Does everybody agree with that? Right? doesn't say any restrictions, so I know the answer is not 2. So again, crossing out 2, crossing out E. I think that's an important skill when you're taking a standardized test. Cross answers out that you know are not true, so you don't accidentally, if you have to guess, pick one that you knew wasn't true. The mode of the members is 11. Are most of the kids 11? Yeah. You could have... You could have three people in your club, 11, somebody who's 100, and somebody who's 1. Do you agree? The, the median is still 11. Do I agree with that? All right, so I don't think there's any relationship between uh, the mode. Just because the median is 11 doesn't make the mode 11. Do I agree with that? And again... That is a tremendous review now of mean, median, and mode. All right, that's always on standardized tests as well. So the correct answer had to be what? None. All right, remember now, you're giving yourself kind of checks here. And I'm also trying to show you that a lot of times your thinking about them, all right, is good, but selecting and, and eliminating is not as good. And that's what I'm concentrating on. The mean is the average. The, mode is the one that occurs the most. The median is the number in the middle. You with me on that? Very good review. Very good review. All right. Let's look at eight now. All right. In a certain shop, items were put in a showcase and assigned prices for uh, January. Each month after that, the price was 10% less than the price for the previous month. If the price of an item was P dollars in January, what will it be in April? Okay, so now this again is an excellent question. And again, some of you might be a little harder without a calculator, but something certainly very important. All right, so think about it now. The original price was what? Was P in what month? January. Then there's what? February. Then what? March and April. That's how I'm looking at it. All right. Now let's see if you remember what I taught you earlier in the year. All right. So each month, the price was 10% less. So what would the price be in February? Somebody tell me. Yes, thank you very much. 0.9p, correct? 
because you get a what? You get a 10% discount, correct? So instead of paying 100%, you're only going to have to pay what? You only have to pay 90%. And you have to pay 90% of what? Of the price. Agreed? So this would be, in February, it would cost you 0.9p. Everybody with me so far? All right. Now, it doesn't sell in February, so you knock it down another what? Now, do you mark it 10% from January or do you mark it 10% from February? February? From February. So now I'm taking 90% of what? Of 0.9. And what's 9 times 9? So this would be 0.81p. That's what the price would be. Are we happy with that explanation? All right, because you're taking 90% of the new amount. So now, in April, I'm doing what? Another 10% off, which means I'm going to multiply by what, Connor? Eight. Nine. Say it. By eight. I'm not sure why you think by eight. Well, I mean, by... What's the price of it in March? What would be the price of it in March? Eight, one, right, so now what would it be in April? What do I do? I don't care what the number is. I just want you to tell me how I would find out the price in April. What would I do? 10% off of the eight. But how do I take 10% off? You times it by point, uh, 10. No, you're not with me at all today, buddy. Not, you're not with me at all. Well, I, I, the 10% off, listen, I don't care what the discount is. I only care what the sale price is. Oh, you times it by point 0.9. There, now you're with me. All right, you multiply by point 0.9. Now, again, if I'm looking at my answers... I mean, some of you are like, oh my gosh, 0. 0.9 times 0. 0.81, how does it get 0. 0.79 so fast? All right, let's say you don't, you, you don't even want to do that. If, if I multiply 9 times 8, it's going to have what in it? 7, right? So it can't be what? Anything but what? E. So now I just tried to show you a way that you can multiply even if you don't want to, but still, if you're multiplying that 0. 0.81 times 9, everybody should be able to tell me is 0.729P. Correct answer, E. Yes. Um, so I did a different way, but I got the same thing. That's perfect. So if you did point nine, then you just did point eight. Yeah. So no, 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 no. Listen to me. That's a very good mistake. Very good mistake. Listen, what I'm saying now, the problem you have with that is you're losing 10% as if 10% was equal all the way through. Let me show you an example. So let's say I'd said $100. Oh. Then if I took 10% off, it would be $90. If I take 10% off of that, that would be $81. Uh, so and if I take 10% off of that, it would be uh, $72.90. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. One at a time. So I'm showing you the discount here was what? The, the, the discount here was $10. Please listen. The discount here was $9. You see what I'm saying? And the discount here. The discount is not the same every single time. The reason why the discount is not the same is because the 10% is coming off of a different price. You hear what I'm saying? We're not taking 10% of 100 and in March taking 10% off again. Does that make sense? Right? You're always just taking 10% off of the sale price. All right. Now, again, thank you very much. That was very good. And for those of you guys who want to get smarter, I'm telling you, now is the time I'm really trying to help you. Understanding numbers. If you can understand the numbers, the, the calculus will be simple. All right? It's really not that hard. All right? It's really not. All right? You've got to read carefully. All right? Let's take a look at number nine, please. Okay. So, the length of segment OP. So I'm going to draw this, OP, and OR. Now, if I had no idea, I would probably say they're what? All right, so if you put C down and you don't even know why, I'm happy. All right, because at least, you know, you're thinking about it, reasoning, saying, it's probably true. 
All right. Now, how do I know that's true? Look here, guys. Here's what I want you to do for me. All right. I want you to draw this triangle down here. And I want you to draw this triangle here. Now, this right here is negative A, and this is negative B. Does everybody agree with that? And this here is A, and this is B. Does everybody see that? Now, if I want to find this right here, if I want to find that right there, then I would have to do Pythagorean theorem. Everybody with me? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Everybody with me? Because that's a right triangle. And all I'm trying to do is show you that if I square A, I get A squared plus B squared equals question mark squared. Right over here. True? Now, if I do this and square it and this and square it, when I square a negative, it becomes a what? Positive. So can everybody see now that that's exactly the same? All right. Now what I do is I just try to show you mathematically why it's the same. All right. Connor, are you with me? All right. Now, again, I would hope that you would have just said, well, let's see and move on. If you know it's true, I'm not asking you to do all that work. I'm just now trying to show you the math to show if you had to prove that that was true. Is everybody happy with that? All right. Again, give yourself a check. I really like you to see your check marks. All right. Things you got right, things you miss. And I'm trying to also establish, listen, are you making careless errors or are there just things you don't know? And the things that you don't know, you should highlight more and try to look at it closely. And if you don't understand it, even after today, come back and see me and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. All right. Number 10. All right. This is just a, a thinking question as far as can you read carefully? All right. It says, a number above that is the sum of two equal odd integers. Well, a number above that is the sum of two equal odd integers. Is it possible for one? Does that fit? Does one fit? No, because an integer would be, in order to get one, it would be one half and one half. Listen to me. One half and one half. Listen to me. Thank you very much. So listen to what I'm saying, because they do put integers on the test a lot. One half and one half does equal one, right? But one half and one half is not an integer. So one does not apply. Is everybody good? No, no. A number above that, I just, I promise you, you'll, you'll get to everything I'm saying. So one does not fit into that category because there's no number plus itself is one, an integer. Why does two work? Because, it's one one plus one. because two is one plus one. So two is a solution that fits over here. Is four a solution? No, because that's two plus two. And they're not what? Odd. So that takes out. Eight is what? And 16 is? So the only number in this box is what? The only number in that box is two. A number above that is the sum of the two equal odds. Then on the one on the right, a number above that is the sum of the two equal evens. Now, I think we've kind of answered that, right? Because we did what? Four worked, eight worked, and 16 worked. Everybody happy with that explanation? So, correct answer is what? Oh, I circled A. See, that's exactly what I mean about doing dumb things. All right. Now, again, does everybody agree that wasn't that hard, right? All right. Requires a little bit of thought. Was that the end of that? All right. Very nice. All right. So let's go to number two now. All right. Hopefully you had some time to look things over. All right. Here we go. Now, it says M and T are integers. Again, the word comes up a lot. Positive or negative counting numbers. All right, so what number to what power equals 16? Four, four squared is one. So four squared equals 16. Anybody else? Negative. Um, actually, that's pretty good. 
negative 4 squared is also 16. Somebody else? Very good. 16 to the first power is 16. Very good. And then we could say 2 to the, thank you very much, 2 to the 4. And you could also do negative 2 to the 4. Is everybody agreeing with that? Now, is T and M, is one always greater than the other? Yes. You guys, that's, we're not, listen to me, we are not arguing. I gave you a list of problems. So look right here. Right now, T is 4. Come on. We're, I appreciate you guys. Just look up here. 4 and 2. Right now, T is greater. Is it possible for M to be greater? I'll just go to the next problem. M is greater than negative 4. So, what's true? D. Right? There's no way. One is not always greater than the other. There's no way to determine. Are we okay with that? Another really good problem. Gets you thinking about all the possibilities. All right? Any questions with that? All right? If you got that right, that's very good. All right? Because most people get locked on four squared, and they think that's the only possibility. All right? So let's da look down here. Question number two. So if x is less than or equal to 5, and x plus y is less than or equal to 7. Now, I always thought these were kind of hard. So let me try to show you how I would do it. All right? I, I like my little table here. Right. So x, y. So what's the largest x could be? So if I put a 5 in for x, now what I want to do is I want, to, I want you to rewrite this for me as y is less than or equal to 7 minus x. All I did was just move the x over to the right side. What? I'm not, I haven't done anything left yet except shown you this. All right. So if I let x be 5, what would it end up being? 2, right? So y is less than or equal to what? 2. So do you agree it could be 2, 1, 0, negative 1? Do we agree with that? Now, x could also be what? 4, right? I'm just going to listen down again. 4. Does everybody agree with that? If x is 4, then y has to be what? 3, what? 3, 2, 1, dot, dot, dot. All right. Let's just do, uh, let's just do one more. All right. If I let x be 3, then it would be what? 4, 3, 2, dot, dot, dot. All right. That's just to get a good thought about the problem. All right, so now, the quantity in column A, which is the what? X, you agree with that? <coughs> is greater than Y. Is X always greater than Y? So if I let X be 5, if I let x be 5, the y has to be what? Does it have to be less than 5? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is three. oh, thank you very much. So if x is 4, but then we get here. Yes. Very good. Now, uh, again, I almost missed that one too because I'm not being careful. And that's what I'm trying to show you. Be careful. All right? So, uh, again, you can see how if you're not patient, you might look at your first guess and say, well, A has to be true. Does everybody agree with that? 
So again, the correct answer here is what? Yes, D, not A. All right. Again, <coughs> trying to just show you techniques. All right, about how to think about those. No, it doesn't. It says x is le x can be anything less than or equal to five. So you can't go above five. You can't go above five. You would be on that, right? All right, that was a very good problem. All right, number three. All right, this one's an excellent question as well. All right, it says the sum of it, the sum of the negative of t. So how do I write the negative of t? Negative t and the square of s plus s squared um, is less than two. Is less than 2. Do I have any issue with that? The sum of the negative of t and the square of s is less than 2. All right? Now, what am I comparing down here? Everybody with me on this? So it's almost correct, except I have a negative t. So what do you think I'm going to do with that negative t? I'm going to move it over. And when I move it over, it becomes a what? It becomes a plus t. So now what's the obvious answer? S squared is less than t plus 2. So t plus 2 is what? t plus 2 is greater than s squared. So correct answer is what? Quantity in column A. All right. Any questions? All right. Let's go to four now. All right. The area of triangle QRS. What's the formula for area of a triangle again? One half base times height. All right. So I want everybody to write down area equals one half base times height. And again, I thought this was very tricky, very tricky. All right, does anybody want to give it a shot here? You want to tell me what they're thinking? This is hard. C, some people, a lot of people thought it was C. Somebody else thought it was C. All right, so let's look at this real quick now, please. All right, what am I missing here? Does anybody agree I'm missing the height? Yeah. Yeah, so you should have been smart enough to draw the height. So let's everybody draw the height. Watch how cool this problem is, guys. And this is how I want you to try to think through things. So you draw on the height. Do I agree with that? Come mm -hmm. on, Connor. You're doing well. Connor. Now, what's the base? So area equals one half times six, but I don't know what the height is. Do I agree? Now, can somebody tell me what the height is less than? Four. It's less than what? Four. It's absolutely less than four. Very, very smart. Why do we say that? Because the hypotenuse here is what? The hypotenuse is four, right? So that means the leg has to be what? It has to be less than four. I don't know what it is because I haven't taught you trigonometry yet. But soon, next year, you'll be able to do that no problem. But right now, listen to me. I know the height has to be less than 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug in 4 and say that's what the answer would be if it were 4. But I know it's going to be a little bit less because the height has to be less than that number. So look what we're saying. A equals 1 half 6 times 4. And what's half of 6 times 4? So the area, if the height was 4, would be what? But I know that height has to be less than 4, so the area would be what? Less than 12. The area of that triangle would have to be less than 12. So the correct answer here is B. All right, again, another really, really good problem. Really good problem. And again, that's what I'm saying. I haven't taught you the trig to be able to figure out what that is. 
all right? But you can see intuitively you could get the answer, all right? Very important. Uh, why is 4 the hypotenuse? Um, this is, hold up, this right here is the right triangle that I'm looking at. I'm not saying that this is 6. You with me? All right. All right, very good, guys, very good. Let's go to five. Now, this one um, is, I think everybody should get. And, and some of you, that's what I'm saying, don't look at something and say it looks hard, I don't know. All right, so let's read carefully. T is a point on the semicircular arc, <coughs> SRP. T is different from S and P. So I have to put T somewhere. Everybody agree? So that is point T. Now, keep in mind, I can move T anywhere I want along that arc. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. All right. So the question is, come on, guys. I want everybody to tell me what's the obvious answer here. A. Has to be A. I shouldn't have to discuss that. Right? Has to be A. The reason why it has to be A, if you're, if you're having any doubt, remember, you're just walking along. The perimeter. The shortest distance is what? Three, right? And then it's got, it can't be point S, so it's got to be a little bit more than three. And if you go the other direction, you're already more than three because you traveled what? Four to get to P. Everybody with me on that? Connor, what? So isn't, isn't it also possible for it to be along the line between P and S? Very good question. Very good question. So in order for that to be true, though, all right, in order for that to be true, Connor, you, it says right here, T is a point on the semicircle. Oh, yeah. All right, R, on the semicircular R. All right, so let's take a look now at number six. In the triangle above, X and Y are integers. And Y is between what? 35 and 40. What is one possible value for x? Well, if y is between 35 and 40, let's pick a number. What number do you want? 36. Okay, so you could have chosen 36, 37, 38, or 39. Everybody agree with that? So the sum of the angles of a triangle add up to what? 180. All right? So it's 180. So there are two y's. Do you agree? So you add two of them, that's 72, 74, 76, and 78. And then you subtract from 180. So this would be 108, 106, 104, 102. Those are your possibilities. If you have 108, 106, 104, 102, then you have the right answer. All right? If you didn't get one of those, you got the wrong answer. Does everybody see how I did that? All right? Who said no? Come on. So, uh, first thing is, do you agree that y has to be somewhere between 35 and 40? So, these numbers are between 35 and 40. Now, do you agree that there are two y values? So, if I let it be 36, I would double it to get 72. And doubled, doubled, and doubled. Do you agree? And then I just subtract it from 180. Good enough? All right, very, very good problem. All right, let's talk about number seven now. All right. The figure above shows part of two circular gears whose teeth interlocked when the gears turn. Gear A has 72 teeth and gear B has 48 teeth. How many complete rotations does gear A make when gear B makes nine complete revolutions? Now, this is a really cool problem because... Um, you, you, everybody understands what gears are, right? So they line up, right? And as they move, does everybody agree there's a one-to-one -one correspondence? Mm -hmm. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. So if gear B makes nine revolutions, that means it goes around nine times, it will be, it will go through nine times 48 teeth. Mm -hmm. Everybody agree with that? Everybody agree? Yeah. And then Connor... What do I do next? And why do I divide by 72? 
That's exactly correct. So 9 times 48, which is like 360, 432, I think. I think it's something like that. But what I'm trying to show you is that there are, there are, no, 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 I'm not, I'm saying, there are 432 teeth that it goes through, right? So if gear A has 72 teeth, then if you divide that number by 72, that will tell you how many rotations it went through. Do I agree? All right. So um, if I do that, one, eight, six. Was the answer six? Six is correct. All right. Anybody have any questions with that? That's a very good problem. Yes. Yeah. So you divide nine <clears throat> times 48 by 72, or can you divide like 432 by 72? Yes, it's the same thing. Okay. Yes. Yes. Like, you also do it's like, you can do it's like 48, 6, 7, 8, and then keep this down by this. Say that again. Like, you can see, like, there's a, like, the difference between the teeth is like, by, like, oh, that's a good way of looking at it. 60, 72, and then you just do 9 minus 2. Yep, I see that. It's very good. 40, 60, 72, how do you do that? 48, 60, 72, 9 by 20. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at number 8 now. Now, again, this is just good math. If the sum of two numbers is 2, that means what? x plus y equals 2, and the difference is what? That means x minus y equals 1. All right, we have to solve that. All right, now what's nice is it's an easy one to solve because you can just add them together because the y's cancel. So you're supposed to say 2x equals 3, so x is equal to 3 over 2. Is that us? All right, listen, we'll finish up this. Tonight, I want you to try three and four. All right, try three and four. Yeah, yeah. Set three and fours tonight.